Hi, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at Microsoft OneNote versus Apple Notes. From the last video that I did, here's why I use Apple Notes over OneNote and why you probably shouldn't. So if you haven't seen the previous video on the state of notes in Microsoft, then check that out next. Let's get into why I use Apple Notes. So some things that I take for granted in Apple Notes, and I'll show you then in OneNote, and then also go on to explain why well, you should probably just use OneNote and not Apple Notes. So Apple Notes is pretty simple to manage. Everything is a folder. You can have nested folders. I'm not sure how many levels deep you can go, but I only go three levels deep anyway. And sometimes I use folders just to collect the folders underneath them. And sometimes I use folders as sort of top level folders with notes in. But there's no sub notes, there's no sub pages, there's no groups of pages. There's just folders, pages, and nested folders. So it's simple to organize. Obviously you can put text in, you can put links in, you can put pictures in, but the structure of Apple Notes is very simple. Everything goes down the page. So if I'm, I can't take a note with text in and then scribble over it. You can see on my iPad, if I just delete some of this, the sync is relatively quick, but depends on how long your handwriting is. So if I'm at a client and I'm writing notes all day, sometimes they do take quite a long time to sync back, but that's not really what I'm using it for. So I don't mind about that. I don't need it to be instantly updating because I'm not sharing that note anywhere. Similarly, if I'm on my iPad and I tap my finger, like the Apple is very good at knowing whether I want to type because I'm using my finger or use the pencil because I'm writing my pencil. I can then start typing underneath the note and then if I want to then draw underneath that. What I can't do, if I wanted to circle some text, I can't do that. Look, it's the, the, because it's sort of layers of things down the page. I can't then draw on top of text. If I try and draw, draw in that section, it just, the Apple thinks I'm just wanting to drag it around so I can't, you know, interact with that text. There is a pen where you can like write and it turns it into text and you can then delete the text, which I don't find particularly useful, probably because my handwriting is not very good. What is good is I, which I take for granted, drawing a line and if you hold at the end, it turns it into a straight line. Same with an arrow. If you do an arrow and hold it, it turns into like, you know, a nice neat looking arrow. Same when I do little boxes for t reminders of tasks, that turns into a little box. But the main thing is the handwriting is good. It's very, very fast. It feels, I mean, it's a bit slippier than writing on paper, but it is very, very fast at updating the, the handwriting. So, and, and it's got the pressure tip. So if I was bothered, if I press hard, it goes quite dark. And if I go quite light, it's, it's quite, you know, a, a lighter. So it feels a bit more natural of actually writing than OneNote. We've got new videos coming out at least every Tuesday on Microsoft at work. So click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever they come out. Other thing, last thing probably of why Apple Notes is good is because it's considering blocks of things down the page. Like one, I can't lose anything off the side of the page because there's no way for me to go over to the right. I've just got a page and instead of flipping the page over and going down a page, you know, like a physical notepad, but a set amount of place that you can write. It's just an infinitely scrolling page, but it's always down the page, which I think is very useful for what I do when I'm taking handwritten notes. I like handwritten notes because it goes into your brain a bit better rather than typing. I can't type, you know, I, I, I could type notes at a push and concentrate, but it's just you're sort of losing that interaction with the person that you're talking to. If you're in a physical meeting, you're like looking down to type or there's a you know physical barrier of the of the thing in front of you. And also, even if you're taking notes, sometimes people are like, oh, what you know, what are you doing? You're like doing other stuff rather than paying attention to the meeting. And most often I've found when people say they are taking taking notes, typing on a PC or Mac, actually they find themselves getting distracted. They go and check their emails and they're then writing emails. So you don't know if they're writing emails or taking notes and it's like a bit of an excuse. It's like, look, let's just shut our laptops and pay attention to the meeting, make a decision and then, then go back to work afterwards. Whereas if you're like writing on a stylus or iPad in my case, an Apple pencil, it's very similar to a 
notepad of paper people can see that you're taking notes it's not in between you there's no physical barrier in between you so the meeting runs a lot better and i just find it easier to just scribble notes and it goes into your brain more and then you can go and type them up afterwards if you want so let's just create a new note so you can underline just by holding it the other thing it does is it reads the text so it's called the title new note although it gets it wrong because my handwriting is not great but I can, you know, it's getting me a text title from what I've written. So I don't need to flip into text and handwriting. I'm just doing handwriting. I always like to set out my notes like this, actions down the side, and it makes a nice little, you know, if I hold at the end of the, my line, it makes it a straight line. Uh, always put the date on, which today is the 27th of the 2nd. And again, it doesn't really matter if my handwriting is bad because it's only for me. Uh, and this is probably why you want to use OneNote because it might not just be for you. But back to my point, because it goes down the page and it's blocks of things going down the page, this then whole handwriting section is considered just one picture. So if I wanted to take this whole section and drag it off on somewhere, I can even copy and paste it into OneNote and that whole thing remains a picture, which I can then is easier to drag around as a whole picture and the text in that picture is searchable if you're using OneNote on Windows the search seems better to be on OneNote in Windows than it does on OneNote in the Mac which again watch that other video which we did last week on all the nuances about the different notes across Microsoft ecosystem but compare that to OneNote so if I jump into OneNote on my iPad and you can see it's updated pretty quickly with what we've just done as I went into it. I guess the benefit of Apple is that it's all sort of integrated. It knows that if I'm writing something on note with my pencil, I'm most likely to just want to draw something. Whereas OneNote, you have to come into draw and then tap on the pen and then sort of draw. If I'm in text mode, actually it's it does sort of move move things around as if it's my finger, but you've got to physically say whether you're in text mode or you want to draw with your pencil. Oh, there's a bit of pressure sensing. That might be new. Yeah, it's a bit of pressure sensitive on one one which I think might be improved from last time I tried it. I'm not sure. But the main thing is that one, why listen to me? I'm Gavin Jones from Me Time, where we help organizations become more efficient, help their employees, save time at work, do more of the things that they love, including increasing sales and well-being. And we do that happening to use the change approach to get more out of Microsoft 365. If you have even got an inkling that you're either not working as efficiently as you could be, or you're not getting the most out of Microsoft 365, then our most popular product is Modern Working Assessment, where we come in, see how your organization is collaborating and working together, and recommend some ways that you can improve. If you're interested in working together, then use the book a call link in the description below to see if we're a good fit to work together. Although I've got it in full screen mode here, the default is that it's sort of you see your pages at the side and then you're sort of losing quite a lot of real estate on the screen. Apple notes, you can't zoom in or out. It's just that's your view. So you write as big or as small as you want in that view. Whereas OneNote, again, if we come into the full screen, it's a bit easier to get a page of information. You're losing quite a lot of stuff from the title bar at the top. You don't get any like standard, like if I hold there, it doesn't make a straight line. It just is just a messy squiggly line. So if I started a new page, called it, I don't know, test, it doesn't, although it puts that writing as the title, it doesn't turn it into computer text for me like the Apple Notes did. I want to set up the page in the same way and I want actions down the side. Again, I can't get a straight line. Put the date on. The date's already in there on OneNote actually, which is on Apple Notes, but it, it gives you last modified date by default, which I like to keep a record of when the note was actually taken. And again, let's write some text. We can add grid lines, view paper style. And I don't like the little left-hand border down the side, but that's just me. So you can obviously do the same thing. If we flip onto it on the Mac version, it does update a lot faster 
than Apple Notes. But one of the big things I stopped using OneNote, one is that you can scroll all the way to the right. So if I could put a note over here, and someone might lose it if we scroll over, you can kind of see it's over there. So it's kind of like you could, could see stuff over there and it might be useful to put things over on the right hand side. I don't know, but it's sort of losing the aspect of a page for me. So again, if I could scroll the door, I might then need another column there just to keep my actions rather than going at the right hand side of the page. It's actually, I just need a delineation. And again, I can't, it doesn't auto do a line for me. You can insert a line probably somewhere, but again, that's extra steps to mess about with rather than just generating for me. But the main bit that I don't really like in OneNote, which is why I stopped using it. If I jump onto the Mac version, look, every single key, like line stroke or group of lines that it thinks I've done is selectable, which isn't bad in itself. I want to like move that whole thing. I can highlight it and drag that whole, that lot about. So that's not an issue. Sometimes you might like drag and miss a bit. So then you're like, you're dragging bits out and maybe that might go wrong. The main reason is I'd written quite a lot of notes in OneNote in handwriting, went onto the desktop version and as it synced, somehow it messed into the text that was already there and then completely exploded all those lines all over the page so then like all of my notes couldn't be visible so i guess you can type text anywhere you want in one note you can like this you can have a text box that just you keep going down but everywhere you tap you can type text and it's a bit more sort of free form than apple notes so that might be useful where you want to I don't know, include drawings around your text. So that can be qu pretty cool. If you've got documents, PDFs that you want to write on, you can still do that on Apple Notes, but it's like contained within that file. With OneNote, when you print a PDF in, it's then just, you can see all the individual pages and then you can sort of scribble like from the side onto that page or just directly onto the page. It kind of works more like a picture. And if again, if we go back onto that other one where we had a picture in, you can sort of draw on top of the picture. And, and those lines would be sort of, again, individually selectable on top. Of, it's like kind of going on top of that picture. So you can do the same thing with any picture. But yeah, that's why I use Apple Notes for my purpose, not sharing. I just want it to be relatively robust and, and both have had issues so that obviously I had a bad experience of OneNote where it lost my page and that was a is big issue for me. As well as at the time when I tried it, I don't think palm recognition was as good. So I kept drawing with my palm and just moving things around, which seems to have got a lot better. But again, I get Microsoft don't really understand. First impressions count. If someone's got a bad experience, they're not likely to go back when there's all other alternatives to go and use. So I just use Apple Notes just because the feeling of the pen is a lot better. Although again, that's got way better on OneNote. That used to be a bit laggy, but if I'm doing it now, it's really fast. It's like, it's, it's as good as Apple Notes is now. So maybe I'll go back and revisit it after doing this video, who knows? But obviously Apple's integrated. It's it's on my iPad, it's on my phone, it's, on, it's everywhere. And OneNote is the same. I can get the OneNote app on my Mac, my iPad, my phone, if I need to. I guess the main reason that I use Apple is that everything I own is Apple. Everything integrates, all my videos are done on a Mac, all of my recordings done on an iPhone. I've got an iPad, Apple TV, HomePod, AirPods, everything, every bit of hardware that Apple sells, pretty much we've got in this house. So everything's, all, I'm already in Apple at work. Pragmatically, everyone's using Windows, and Microsoft 365 and I use Microsoft 365 for my work as well because Apple's just not good at like general day-to-day -day sort of work documents and presentations and stuff like that 
and I don't need my notes to be integrated unless I'm working on a client's tenant and there, then probably the reason why you want to use OneNote is you're not, probably, if you're watching this, got Apple hardware, because most organizations do not have Apple hardware, they have Windows hardware. And so even if you've got an iPad, trying to get your Apple Note back into somewhere in the Microsoft ecosystem might be too tricky or an extra step. And you can have shared OneNote. So if you notice this one, we're in the testing team for YouTube Notebook. If we go into Teams, that OneNote is shared with everybody in that team. And we can see all of the stuff that we did directly in Teams. So if anyone's taking notes that are shared, then it's updating everywhere. So this is directly in Teams, and you can see me writing in real time. And everyone else could see that in real time as well. So whether you're typing the notes in OneNote, if you like typing, or someone else is writing the notes, if they've got a stylus and pencil or iPad and Apple Pencil, everything's synced, and you can see that it's synced really fast. If you're in a normal job, you don't have access to Apple stuff, then just use OneNote. It is really good, despite my bad experience, but like to be honest, I had a bad experience and that's why I sort of went in back into Apple. But you're unlikely to be able to do that if you're a normal person doing a normal job that's got a Windows PC, even if you've got an iPad, iPad then actually it's easier just to write directly into OneNote for all the benefits you get, rather than going into Apple and then putting it somewhere else. A halfway house, if you really want to keep in Apple, is obviously take your notes in Apple and then copy and paste that as a picture back into OneNote. And then you're getting the benefit of everything being in OneNote, especially if you're in a shared OneNote. And it's important for you to share that note across multiple people in a team. And then that, all, that handwritten text is searchable as well. So not exhaustive differences, but just why I tend to use Apple rather than OneNote and why you probably shouldn't. If you like the video, remember to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because we've got new videos coming out on Microsoft at work every Tuesday. If you really like the videos, consider supporting the channel by joining the channel using the link just underneath the video. Click join button, there's three tiers. You can get access to videos quicker. You can get access into live Q&A with me if you need more support, or you can just support the channel for a small monthly fee to keep these videos coming out for free and get quicker access to any questions you've got in the comments. But thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.